The following is a message from the pulpit of the Bible Baptist Church of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, led by Pastor Philip Blackwell. It is our desire that God would use this message to be a help and a blessing to you. If you're looking for a traditional church where Christ is preeminent and the membership is family, we invite you to come and be our guest. Now may God bless you as you listen. chapter number one. Thank you so much for being in church today. The Gospel of Luke chapter Uh, this series that uh, we're going to begin, we've entitled Unwrapping Christmas, and what we want to do is take you chronologically through the Christmas story, and we want to unwrap these stories to help them to be Life. We get so busy uh, with f- uh, family gatherings, we get so busy doing all the things that we our eyes uh, begin to focus on those things instead of remembering the reason why. I hope that as we go through uh, this series of messages on unwrapping Christmas and we look at these desire uh, that God would put these before your heart and your eyes so that you can remember them this time of year uh, for what he will stand you can remain seated but if you can let's stand this morning out of love and respect for the scriptures verse number 26. The Bible says, and in the month, uh, sixth month, the angel Gabriel of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her Hail thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. He saw him Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the be seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her sixth month with her, which is called barren. For with God nothing shall be in And Mary We'll go back to verse number 28. And I want you to notice that the Bible says there, And the angel came in unto her and said. So the angel came to her. Announcement. Let's pray together. Lord, we sure do love you this morning. And we are thankful that we get to stand behind this Fill me with your spirit, God, that you would give my stammering tongues the words that need to be said today that can hear. Lord, I pray that as the word of God goes forth, it would not go forth just as uh, the word of a man or the preaching. We need to hear a message from you, God, that will help us in these days to come. And Lord, I pray that as we talk and preach on this subject, the Christmas announcement, God, I pray that you would help our hearts and minds to be this holiday. 
that. You gave your life on the cross of Calvary so we could have eternal life. And Lord, I pray this morning that as we talk of your son. God, I pray that you would stir our souls today. And God, I pray you'd bless our that as we hear the word of God today, that you'd speak to our hearts. And Lord, I would pray most of all, if there might be service today, that Lord, I pray they'd come to know him before it's eternally too late. God, be with us and bless, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Have you ever been watching a program on television? Our area. Uh, there was such an important uh, announcement that had to be made that the powers that, that be, hey, they deemed it necessary to interrupt what you were watching in order to give you a special mind in the sixth month of the pregnancy of a lady by the name of Elizabeth. We're going to find that in the that the, this angel Gabriel is going to be sent from God uh, to Mary to give her a special find that uh, in this announcement that uh, the Lord is going to reveal to Mary something that is the greatest announcement that would ever be given and you say preacher why is do you consider this uh, that greatest announcement that would be given well this is the reason the Old Testament there was one constant those pages and all those chapters and that was simply this that the Messiah was coming in according to Genesis 3.15 you can find the Messiah coming in Exodus, Leviticus Numbers, Deuteronomy all the the scriptures, Old Testament scriptures testify of me. And so what we find in the Old Testament is a constant refrain and that refrain is that Jesus Christ is coming. That the world is coming. And now in the Gospel of Luke chapter number 1 after approximately 4,000 years place that the Messiah is going to enter into humanity, that the Savior of the world is going to make his appearance through the womb of a virgin. Now what an announcement this was. What unparalleled announcement this was. Now in this message we're going to be looking at verses 26 down announcement. Let me show them to you and we'll be done. Number one, I want you to notice that in this text was a scriptural announcement. Look in verse number 26 uh, and down through verse Let me make a statement that you need to understand and that is this. God always fulfills His work. He never violates it, nor does He ever work in a way that would contradict His work. He never to be consistent and never contradictory. You say, well, preacher, I was reading over in such and such a contradiction. Well, let me say this. If there's a, a seeming contradiction in the Bible, the contradiction is not with the There is not one uh, contradiction in the Word of God. I remember a few years ago, there was a gentleman that that there was contradictions in the Bible. He didn't come to hear the Word of God. He didn't come to edify saints. No, he was a lost man that came and he had one thing on his mind. He wanted to disprove with a list of questions and seeming contradictions. And week after week, I would talk to him after church about He didn't want to know whether they were true contradictions or not. He was trying to disprove the Bible. But let me say, friend, I'm glad this morning that I can tell you on the authority of the Bible that there is not
to his word. That's why the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. It's because it is sure and steadfast. So as we begin to read this, I want you to understand that God will always fulfill his word. He Now notice this announcement that's given. It's, it's given, uh, the announcement is, is given. Notice what it says. It says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, Nazareth, to a, notice this next word, what is it? Virgin. So notice. Son into the world, it says to a virgin. Now let me say this morning as we're thinking about this. Unique, something that's never happened before and something that shall never happen again. A be born without the help of man. It's going to be supernatural. This birth is going to happen very act of God. See, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15, the Bible promised the couple and go there with me. Genesis 3 and verse number 15. Keep your hand here and Luke will be right back. But I want to show you a couple things here in Genesis chapter number 3 and verse number 15. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15 that the scripture is going to use a phrase that you'll never see again. Something that is unique in all the Scripture. Let me say this, unique in all the world. You say, what is that? Well, look in Genesis 3 and verse 15. Adam and Eve has sinned against God. Now they're in a fallen state. And in verse 15, the God of heaven is going to give them hope concerning the Messiah that is going to come and bruise the head of Satan. Look there in verse 15. You've got it? Let's look together. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's talking to the devil. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between thy seed, and notice these next three words, and her seed. Do you realize in the Bible when it talks about seed, it's always used concerning men. But here we're going to find that there is no mention of men. It just talks about the seed of the woman. And this seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of Satan. It says, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And on Calvary, that's exactly what happened. The heel of Christ was bruised in that his wound was not a fatal wound. For he rose from the grave three day after three days and three nights. But we find that Satan has that head wound and he's only awaiting judgment day. Now take your Bible, go to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter number 7. So in Genesis chapter 3, there's a unique phrase speaking about the seed of the woman. And now in Isaiah 7 and verse 14, we find that God is going to explain that. He's going to expand upon that. In Genesis chapter, or Isaiah chapter 7 and verse number 14, would you notice with me what the Bible says? It says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Now notice what the Lord's going to do. It's going to be a what? A sign. That means it has to be something out of the ordinary. A sign is not something that naturally happens. It has to be something that is supernatural in nature for it to be a sign. Correct? All right, look at verse 14. It says, therefore the Lord himself. So the Lord is giving this sign. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold... A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So notice, if you will, the Bible says here a virgin is going to conceive. This is a woman who has never known a man. It is not a young maiden as some of the Bible versions will use today. Hey, you know how I know that? Because it is no miracle. It cannot be a sign if a young lady has a baby. You know why? Because that's natural. That's normal. There's nothing supernatural about this. But what we find in Isaiah 7, 14 is that a virgin is going to conceive and she's going to bear a son and notice and shall call his name Emmanuel. You know what Emmanuel means? It means God with us. There's going to be a supernatural birth that's going to bring forth a supernatural person. And listen, it had to be without the aid of a man. If man would have gotten involved, it would have been a polluted bloodline. So it had to be the very son of God. And so God was going to use a scriptural method. And you say, what was that? Well, it was going to be that virgin 
virgin's womb. Matter of fact, Mary is going to ask in verse 34 of Luke chapter 1, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And so we find there the fact that this is going to happen without the agency of man. Hey, that God was going to work according to His Word. And let me say this morning, I am so thankful that we have such a Bible that God will keep every word of it and we can trust everything that God has said in His book. You know why? Because God's never going to contradict it. He's never going to work against it. You know why I can believe uh, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? I can believe it because it's in the Bible. And God is never going to contradict His Word. Hey, and because I've called on Christ for salvation, guess what? According to the authority of God's Word, which the Bible says that God is exalted above His name, hey, I can be sure that I'm going to heaven. And friend, let me tell you this morning, when He spoke to Mary, hey, He was speaking about a scriptural method that was not foreign to the pages of the Bible. Now let me say this morning, if you believe God's telling you to do something that contradicts the Bible... Can I just tell you on the authority of God's Word, God is not telling you to do that. Hey, this morning God's not going to tell you to divorce your wife and marry another woman. That's not going to be of God. God is not going to tell you to do that. You're not going to find in the Word of God where God is going to contradict in any place, uh, anywhere. God's never going to say, do this this way and then, oh, you shouldn't do it that way. No, God is consistent and God always uses scriptural methods. Number two, notice this announcement. It was the announcement of a scriptural method. That was the virgin's womb. Number two, it was the announcement of a scriptural manifestation. Jump down to verse number 32. Notice, what is this manifestation? Well, we read about it there in Isaiah uh, chapter 7 and verse 14. But let's look at verse 31. The angel speaking unto Mary, he says in verse 30, Fear not, Mary. Obviously, Mary saw this angel, and the first thing she did, she was afraid. And the Bible says, Fear not, Mary. In verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. You know what Jesus means? It's the New Testament equivalent of the Old Testament word Joshua. It means Jehovah is salvation. So what we find here, Jesus is God. He is salvation. He is entering into the world. And notice it's a scriptural manifestation. Look at verse 32. Just so nobody misunderstands, in verse 32, He explains it clearly. He says, He, that's speaking of Jesus, shall be great and shall be called the Son, capital S-O-N, of the highest. You'll find that phrase, the highest in the Bible. You know what it's talking about? It's talking about God the Father. And the Bible says here that He, Jesus, is going to be great. He's going to be called the Son of the Highest. And so notice it's going to be a scriptural manifestation that the Son of God is come into the world. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, probably a very familiar verse that you know that uh, if you buy Christmas cards, it may be on some of your Christmas cards. Isaiah 9 6 says this, For unto us a child is born. Unto us, listen to this, A son is given. Hey, a child is born, that's his humanity. A son is given, that's speaking of deity. So in that one verse, it speaks of both the humanity and the deity of Jesus Christ. And what we find in this verse is that he which is going to be born, he who's going to be manifested, is going to be the very Son of God and God the Son. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. In John 1, 14, it says, uh, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Hey, when you see Jesus, you've seen the Father. Is that not what uh, Jesus said to His disciples? He said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so we find here a scriptural manifestation. Do you know what the religious crowd of Jesus' day got the most angry about? Well, listen to the words of the Pharisee. He said he was the Son of God. Listen, that was a scriptural announcement in the Old Testament that the Messiah was going to be the very Son of God. We find that there in Isaiah 9 and verse number 6. And here, uh, this angel is confirming that this child that's going to be born, it's not going to be like any other child. Hey, this is going to be the very Son of God. Hey, the Son of the Highest that's going to be able to take away the sin of the world. So we find this scriptural announcement. There's a scriptural method. Number two, there's a scriptural manifestation. And number three, the announcement uh, of this child coming uh, holds to us a scriptural meaning. Look in verse 32. 
The Bible says, And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And notice it says, And the Lord God shall give unto him, what's the next two words? The throne of his father David, verse 33. And he shall, what's this next word? Reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Do you see those three words? Throne, reign, and kingdom. Do you know what the scriptural meaning of the Son of God coming into the world was? It was that the King is here. The King is here and He's ready to set up His kingdom. Now you know exactly what is going to happen. Jesus is going to enter into this world and He is going to be the King. The kingdom of God is going to come unto the people. And what are the people going to do? They're going to reject Him. Jesus came. He was going to die. We know that according to Scripture. But He was also going to set up a kingdom. And we find that people rejected Him. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, we just read it, uh, repeats this. It says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulders, and His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of His government and peace there shall be no end. So here's a fulfillment of that prophecy that Messiah was coming. And when He came, He was coming to rule. But what we find is that man rejected him. You remember what Luke 10 verses 9 and 11 repeat? Twice in those two verses it says this, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Twice in those two verses. When Jesus was here, can I tell you, the kingdom had come. You know why the kingdom had come? Because the king had come. But we find that people rejected Him. And Jesus even said in Mark 1.15, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. But in Matthew 21.43, because of their rejection, here's what Jesus said. He said, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruit thereof. They rejected the Messiah. They rejected their king. Matter of fact, did not the Jews say, We have no king but Caesar? Here we find that the Lord Jesus Christ who was going to be born, hey, it was the very King of glory who would one day sit and rule and reign on a throne. Hey, the throne of His father David. Hey, God is fulfilling His word in the birth of the Messiah. Number one, we find that the Christmas announcement was a scriptural announcement. Number two, we find not only was a scriptural announcement, also was a shocking announcement. Look at verse 34. He said, Mary, you're going to have a child. Look at verse 34. The Bible says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Mary's asking the question that you would probably ask this morning if you were in her case. Mary, who had never known man, uh, she's been told by the angel that she is going to have a child, and that child's going to be the Son of God. And Mary asks, How shall this be? See, Mary was espoused already. You know what espousal meant? This espousal is not like our engagements of today. Espousals in the Bible realm, uh, Bible times, was as good as if the marriage had already come together. It was a legal contract, a binding contract. Those who were in that binding contract, if they decided they didn't want to get married, you know they had to go through the legal rights of divorce? They had to. Because it was such a legal binding contract. Now here's a Jewish young lady. She is about to get married to a man by the name of Joseph. Joseph obviously is a way preparing uh, for things so he can come and get married according to Jewish tradition. And here's a lady that's probably just got her minds on the future. All these things that's probably going to happen. She's going to get married. She's going to have children. In that order, all these things are going to happen. But you know what? God interrupts her life. God comes to her through the angel Gabriel and says, you're going to have a child. And you know what? Mary asks the question, how shall this be? Hey, to Mary's mind, this is a dilemma that cannot be surmounted. But I'm thankful that God had the answer. Look what it says in verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Do you see this announcement came? Mary was living her life and she was perplexed by the uh, the statement that she was going to have a child, but God had an answer for her. 
He tells her that she is about to be part of the greatest miracle that the world has ever known. God is about to turn Mary into a miracle. Hey, the angel that speaks of the words, of certain words, is going to conquer Mary's doubt. And you know, I'm thankful that God conquers our doubts. Has the Lord ever asked you something and you didn't know how it was going to happen? Have you ever had the Lord ask you to do something through His Word and you're thinking, Lord, I cannot do what you're asking me to do? I've been there. But you know, I'm thankful that if we'll get in God's Word, God will answer the questions of our heart. You remember Moses, he had questions before he went back to Egypt. And what did God do? God answered all his questions. And friend, I want to tell you this morning, God is able. Though we might be shocked by what God might ask of us, I'm thankful that God has answers for us. So we find this announcement. It's a scriptural announcement. Number two, it's a shocking announcement. But here's where I want to get this morning. I want you to notice number three. It was a satisfactory announcement. Look at verse 38, please. Verse 37, let's jump back there. It says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. You know, we know verse 37, but do we really believe verse 37? We believe it because it says it, but let me ask you, do you really believe it when it comes to you? Oftentimes we'll say, we'll read these verses and we'll also say, uh, uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And we believe them, but let me ask you, do you really believe them? Do you really believe what God said? And so here's the angel. He speaks the word unto Mary that with God nothing shall be impossible, that God is able, going to be able to bring forth a child from that virgin's womb. And look at verse number 38. Mary is satisfied with God's answer concerning her question of how shall this be. Look at verse 38. It says, And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. You know what that handmaid means? It's just a female servant. You know what she's saying? She said, Behold, Lord, look on me, your servant. You know what she was saying? She said, I'm willingly submitting to what you want for my life. Now let me say this. We have to pause just for a minute. That's not a small statement. Do you realize that a lady who had already entered into this covenant to be married, who is in this espousal time, do you realize that if she's found to be with child, she can be taken outside the city and stoned to death? You remember Joe, the Bible says Joseph was not willing to make her a public example. That's what that's talking about. So here's a lady that could lose everything because God told her something was going to happen to her. But we find instead of fighting against the will of God, she simply said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord... And look what it goes on to say, Be it unto me according to thy word. She said, I'm just the servant of God. Lord, be it according to your word. I'll do whatever it is you would have me do. See, God gave her answers that satisfied her heart. Can I ask you this morning at Christmas time, do you have some questions in your heart and mind? You know what? God can give you some answers this morning through His word. And He can satisfy your heart. He can satisfy your questions in such a way where that you'll understand that God's way is right and He can give you joy and peace and help you during this time. See, Mary was just a simple lady. But we find even though she was a simple lady that was going preparing to lead a simple life, that God had something supernatural for her. But Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Let me ask you this morning, what does God ask you to do? Well, let me tell you, if God's asked you to do something, can I tell you this? It's going to be acceptable to your heart. You say, how do you know that, preacher? Romans 12, to be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good. And what's the next one? And acceptable and perfect will of God. See, when God speaks to our hearts, if we'll simply take Him at His word by faith, His will becomes acceptable to our hearts. We'll be satisfied with the will of God. Let's stand together. Lord, we sure love you this morning. Thank you for listening to this message today. It is our prayer that this sermon fed your soul, lifted your spirit, and encouraged you in your walk with God. And as we conclude, please remember, there's always a place for you at Bible Baptist Church.